I've got a D810 with an original VR series 70 to 210, 70 to 200 mid-board lens, excuse me. This, um, it's an F2.8 lens. The reason I, the reason I like this particular setup is this lens, when you had the Gen 2 VR, the VR2, whatever, the, the one that come after this one, it lost these switches on the front that locks the autofocus. So once you focus it, you can actually hit this button, recompose and fire the frame and the autofocus won't shift. But this lens takes insanely good images. It also gives me that extra stop of light over an F4 lens that I wasn't getting before. This lens has four selector switches on it. Those being the manual auto lens selector. <laughs> I can't even read it without my glasses. Then you have a switch that limits it to infinity to 2.5 meters. And that's so that it won't hunt all the way in on your focus and come back out. It makes it focus a little faster if you're shooting distant subjects. And then you have the VR switch, of course. Then you have the normal and active modes in VR. Active has to do with like riding in a car when stuff's flowing by left to right and you're dealing with bounce. And then normal VR is just random motion. Supposedly in the car it does bizarre things if you don't run it on that active mode. And then of course it has the tripod foot. I've got the foot removed currently from my lens, but it does have a foot that goes on it. And then of course the collar is fixed onto the lens or you can move it around and lock it down. I currently run mine with a Black Rapids adapter so that the camera assembly hangs from the lens instead of from the bottom of the body. That way it doesn't put the strain on the lens mount. The lens has a fair bit of heft to it. it. It's not a lightweight lens, but it balances well with a full frame body. I mean, it sits in your hand just right and doesn't move around. You can see how fast the aperture works. If I can get the lens flare out of the frame. Here we go. See it close down to F22. Open it back up. I like to shoot this lens wide open. You don't buy an F2.8 aperture to shoot it at F11. <laughs> You know, and you can, there's a lot, there's much cheaper lenses to do that. I like this one because of the light gathering. That's the main reason I wanted it, was because it has, you know, it has a stop of light over an F4 lens. A lot of these events I like to shoot, they're indoors and they're low light. If I could get this lens in an F2, I would probably have it, <laughs> but it's heavy. I mean, it would be incredibly heavy at F2. I mean, that would be, that lens element would be enormous. To go to F2, but it's electrical, it's gilded, it don't have an aperture ring, which kind of bums me out. But you know, it is what it is. But it works really well, it honestly works probably as good as the one that came after this. Of course, it's not as fast and it's not as sharp as the new one, it doesn't have focus breathing in the latest version. But you can get this lens for under a thousand dollars now that the new ones come out. And the new one's twenty eight hundred dollars, this one's you know, less than a grand. The Gen 2 ones are now $1,200, $1,400. So you can, um, you can get these lenses and they take incredibly good pictures as I've been interspersing through the video here of the, of the competition I shot last weekend. All that shot at 6,400 ISO as well. If you zoom way in, there's, there's, uh, there's ISO noise. But at normal viewing sizes of eight by 10, 11 by 14, the noise isn't an issue. That was more important than perfect light or getting, you know, setting up lights and all that. It was too dynamic. There was sometimes three, four kids out at once, and I was I was just shooting between them as fast as I could. So you know, you just do with what you have, with what you got, and get what you can. So I ran 6400 ISO all day. Now, fortunately, the light didn't change on me. They had skylights, and as the sun went over, it did light the room up a little brighter, and all that done, since I ran aperture priority, was it just sped up my shutter speed until the sun passed, and then it slowed it back down a little bit. And that gave me plenty of working room. But, you know, don't be afraid to get you an older version of a lens as, as opposed to buying the latest and greatest. If I could have that brand new 70 to 200, I would probably have it. And when this one starts to give me trouble, I'll probably move to it. Mainly because the Tamron hasn't proven itself yet. If you look at older Tamron lenses, the there's no there's no 
older ones because they don't last. They're just not built to the durability of a Nikkor lens. Right now, they've got a 70 to 200 that rivals the new Nikkor and it's a third of the price. So the jury's still out on that one. I might jump to the Tamron count <laughs> if, that, if that lens proves itself out by the time this one croaks. So we'll see, but I appreciate you watching. And if you like my videos, hit that like button. If you uh, want to see more of them, hit the subscribe icon and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good one. Hey, kitty, kitty. How you doing? What are you doing, kitty? Well, what do you think? Okay. <laughs>